Hello and welcome to the GEG SoCal monthly meeting for May. Um, May the 3rd be with you, I know. Um, anyway, we are here. It is an asynchronous meeting. I am Nancy Minicozzi, a technology coach at Beverly Hills High School. And I'm here with my colleague, Karen Lagola. We are excited to be sharing some things with you this month, what's new in Google, and we have some special treats in store, so let's get going. And a reminder to connect with us in all these ways. We're always happy to see you, whether you visit our website, send us an email, join us in our Google group, or follow us on Twitter. And now I'm going to turn it over to Karen to share what's new this month in Google. So what is new? There's always a bunch of fun, great things that are new, but these are the three top that we thought you would pertain to us as educators, as teachers. So the first one is you can now embed a linked um, response chart from Google Forms right into Google Doc Slides or drawing, and you can automatically update that by clicking the update button. That's very similar to when you put in a Google drawing, right? And then you modify the drawing, you click update when it's in your doc. So now you have that ability with your charts. Smart reply is now on slides, which is very cool. We've had it in docs, but now you have it in slides and Google will suggest relevant replies to save you time. And now also, in uh, with Meet, if you are creating your Meet through Google Calendar, you can pre-assign your breakout rooms, you can turn on meeting settings, and you can also designate your co-hosts. So those are our three favorite new things. And now we're going to jump into Forms real quick. So we are going to focus on forms and there's so much to do with forms that we are not going to be able to do everything. But I want to draw your attention over here to this understanding different question type. This is a great form that we've given you here that actually has a question with each type. So if you have never used a certain style question, you can access that form to take a look at it. We are going to uh, talk about templates. Have you ever used templates? We're actually going to create our test form today with a template. And if your district has templates like mine, I have this picture down here. This is what it would look like. Uh, we have templates with our branding. So if it was, uh, we're going to create a form that's going to go out to parents or go out outside of our school site it needs to be branded and then there are templates that google has done so you'll see that but when i go right now into my drive and i go to create new form you'll see i can do blank a blank quiz which will also already have the quiz settings or i can go from a template and that is where if your district does give you uh, templates, you would see it up here where it says template gallery, it would also have your district. So from here, I'm just going to scroll down. And I'm going to choose education. So again, because it's a template, just like the quiz template, it does come with some pre set settings. So you always have to come in here and look and just make sure that the settings are what you want them to be when you use the template. So it's made as a quiz, but you can see that there's no points designated. Um, the cool thing about it is that it just sets you up and it makes it a little bit easier for you to go in and plop your questions in right into this. So I'm going to, because I already have one, I'm going to jump over because one of the things we want to talk about today is actually um, using data validation to set a password up on your form. This is something that our teachers did a lot of, especially during uh, COVID when we were at home learning, it was a way to secure the form so that only that period could take it and then they could adjust it. So what I'm going to do, the way that we do that is with sections. I like to make the password section its own section. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this section because Google is weird about adding sections. So you'll see there's a method to my madness. And then I'm going to add the section. You see how it pushed that section up to the top? Everything would be connected to it. So I'm going to now change this back to assessment. And now I have password. So once you create that section for password, I'm going to go in here, be in the section, and I'm going to create the question. I'm going to call it 
password. And you can call this. This can be a question that your students need to answer, or it can be, you know, it could be a word, or it can be a number. I'm going to show you with a number. And I'm going to come down here and say response validation. And then I'm going to say number. And then I'm going to choose that it needs to be equal to, because it's going to be this exact number that my students need to put in. And I'm going to put in one, two, three, four. So that's the number that it needs to be, you'll see that students have to do that to move on to the next thing. And you would change that password each time that your students used this form. So if it's for another period, or if it is for um, students who were sick and need to retake the test. So that is using response validation. This is Nancy, and I'm interrupting this broadcast for an important announcement. We forgot to mention that when you are using a password with data validation, you need to enter custom error text so that the form does not give away your password to the students. Now we're going to talk about branching a form. I now have multiple sections. You'll see that I have my assessment section. Another thing that I always change when I do a form, especially with the templates, is that I separate the first name and last name because I like it that way in my sheet. You can always split that cell in your sheet as well, but I like to collect it this way. This form is collecting emails automatically. Again, something we want to check with our settings. Um, and then I just have quiz questions and he, I have one quiz. So I set up one question and you'll see that I have my answers. And if I answer slides, right, I've set my correct answer to forms. And if I answer any of the other answers, it's going to take me to a section that I've set up here called review so that when the students go there, they get a chance to learn how to do it. So we're going to check that in a minute. But before I do, I'm just going to make this a little bit easier for us by um, turning off making questions just for our example so I don't have to go through. But I will have to make my password. So my password is 1234. That takes me into the form. And then I can put in my names and then I'm going to choose the wrong answer. I'm going to come down here and choose draw and I'm going to hit next. And now it takes me to my review. So here is a link for your students to click on. It could be a video, it could be a link so that they understand what the right answer is, right? Get started with forms. Now I've learned that the best way to collect data with Google tools is there. And so now students can click, I get it now, I'm ready to try again. They can hit next and that question takes them right back so that they could do the next question. If I had another question, it would take them back to the form. So you can set that up for each one as you're going through so that your students can be learning the skill and you can use this for practice. So by doing that, it's just setting up the sections and then having them go in and go to next session. The other thing you need to look at here is after section two, you do have this ability as well, is you can send them to a different place after this. So if I wanted after they come back and they redo that question because it's the last one, it could then go to submit form. So those are just some tools that you can use with Google Forms. It's very cool. Those are our two favorite things. Um, within our slide deck, we do give you some resources here uh, so that you can learn them. And then again, at the end here, we have Google Forms and quizzes, uh, a one sheet that I created and one sheet that Nancy created for the teachers here at Beverly Hills High School. And we have a couple of videos. And of course, Alice Keeler has a lot of information on forms and we added her here as well for you to look at. So that is forms for you today. That is our meeting. I hope you found it helpful. We look forward to seeing you June 7th for Sheets. Bye. Bye.